All right, so I'm usually one who gives weather forecasters the benefit of the doubt, right? I mean, these people are trying to predict the future, and that's never easy. But man, they really blew it today. It was supposed to be 5 to 10 today, and I can tell you by all the flags I passed, driving down to the marsh, it's blowing at least 20. I mean, the wind is screaming out of the north. Now, there's a big storm to my south. I'm hoping that's kind of sucking a lot of air in and causing this wind. Maybe once that dissipates, things will lessen up. But right now, it looks pretty bleak. That's not the only thing I got working against me today, though. Really paltry tide range today. Not much at all. I looked at all the buoys, and yesterday, the tide just meandered back and forth all day. Didn't move much at all. Literally a quarter of a foot. That's it. Kind of the same thing in the forecast today. So, got my work cut out for me, that's for sure. But my plan this morning is to throw topwater baits for speckled trout. We had a really warm weekend here in South Louisiana. In fact, set record highs the last two days. It's not going to be quite as warm today, but I know that water temperature is up. So I'm hoping these fish will be biting top waters. If I can't get a few to come up on top, I'm probably going to resort to throwing a cork and try and catch some keeper speckled trout. Hey, what the heck? It's a Monday and I'm fishing in South Louisiana. I got absolutely nothing to complain about, right? That is the coolest thing ever. So now I'm out here. Is it windy? Yes, ridiculously. But I'm out here. I might as well throw these top water baits. Water temp is 64 degrees. I definitely like that. But it's going to be tough to fish very far away from these shorelines because it's just so rough. I crossed a big lake getting out here and man, I just got soaked. Just crazy wind. If I'd known it was going to be this windy, I might have made some different plans for today. But I'm going to start with a Matrix mullet because we don't have a good tide range today, as I mentioned. So I don't think those fish are going to be too aggressive. That's a much more subtle bait than the Sheet Dog, which is another one I really like. But believe me, if I go out without getting any bites, I'm going to switch to that Sheet Dog and see what happens with that. All right, here goes nothing. Let's give this a whirl. All right, I'm seeing a bunch of surface activity. Nothing has exploded on me yet, but everything looks good. All right, there are definitely trout in here hitting on top. We just got to fool one with this bait. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Puglia Sporting Goods. Oh, hit right by the boat. There he is. Oh, goodness, he missed it. <laughs> right by the boat. I don't know if you could see that. It was so close. It's amazing how often that happens. They hit you right by the boat. You make a 50-yard cast, and he's going to hit you in the last one yard. Oh, there he is. That. Oh goodness. Oh, that might be a that might be a nice fish. Oh goodness. That could be a really big trout. Oh, goodness. That's a good fish, man. I hope I get him. Oh, it might be a red. It might be a red. I saw a little bit of a red tail. Oh, yep, red fish. Not the speckled trout I was hoping for. All right, so it's probably a 24-inch red. Bigger than I like to keep. I'm going to let him go. I'm glad I caught him because it reminds me to take out my net. What's up, big boy? How are you? All right. Look at this guy. You can see why I thought it was a big trout. I mean, that's a that's a nice red. He put up quite a fight in this warm water. I really like the hooks on this Matrix mullet. But you don't lose a lot of fish on that bait. Let's see how big he is. Uh, 20, 24 and a half, 24 and a half inches. Let's send him on his way. Well, not the big trout I was hoping for, but it's a start. Any fish on top is a blast. So much fun. And this wind is just off the chain ridiculous. 
So now I see why I caught that red here. It's a big grass flat. Now I like grass throwing topwaters for trout, but this might be a little bit too thick. Kind of like that sparse grass. Stalk here, stalk there, rather than anything matted. And this isn't really matted, but it's, it's a whole lot thicker than I'd like. Ooh! Oh, goodness. Oh, ho, ho. That was a trout. Oh. Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh, he never had the bait, but man, it was a good blow up. All right, all right, that's a trout. That's a top water. Oh, no. Oh, I was just bragging on these hooks. <laughs> It's really not the hook's fault. I don't know if you saw that bait come flying back at me. That's why you wear sunglasses when you're topwater fishing. There's a fish. There's a fish. Oh, it's a bass. <laughs> it's a bass. Topwater bass. All right, so we're catching bass, redfish, and speckled trout all in the same area i still didn't take my net out after this cast i will but watch i'm gonna catch one on this cast so my boat's only 18 feet long so i store my net it's collapsible it's really a kayak net but man i never have it when i need it all right so now i'm ready got the net out in a prime area just need the fish cooperate this wind's really going to limit me today as far as where i can fish my boat's made for the marsh not really <laughs> for rough seas. Okay, I appear to have drifted out of the bait, not seeing any surface activity. I haven't got any blow-ups in a few casts. So I think I'm gonna run back to where I started, see if I can get some more bites. All right, starting to see some mullet jumping. It's really the first I've seen on this drift. Oh, oh, there's a fish. I did not even hear him hit. I just felt him. Uh, I'd say he's not the biggest topwater trout I've ever caught, <laughs> but he is over 12 inches. He's about maybe 13, eh, maybe 14. We'll put him on the tape, and then we'll put him in the box, and then we'll put him in the fryer. I never, ever, ever heard that fish hit. That tells you how windy it is today. Let's check the size. He's actually 14 and a half. He's bigger than I thought he was. All right, so we've landed the trifecta. We've landed a trout, a bass, and a red. Also had another trout on that I lost. Now this cove is only two and a half to three feet deep, which is a little bit shallower than I'd like, but it's got some really pretty water. And for the most part, it's got the sparse grass that I like, and it's got some bait. Oh, goodness. Oh, stay on, stay on. What was that? A crazy explosion come on i just want to lay eyes on you oh you're not that big you're not that big man i thought you were bigger come on surf in he's barely hooked all right that's a good trout i mean it's not bad it's an 18 inch fish it's big enough all right let's see how big he is right he's 17 and a half 17 and a half inches all right the matrix mullet is coming through today I don't know that I could not have caught him on a she dog, but just with this bad tide range, just need something a little more subtle, and I feel like this bait is giving me bites I wouldn't otherwise get. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Matrix Shad, and by Fitzgerald Fishing, and by Seato New Orleans, and by Versamax Quartz, and by Death Grip Jig Heads. Ooh, good. Right here by the boat. <sighs> How could you miss that? That was rude. That was so rude. Now it's amazing the different level of activity today compared to my last top water trip. That day the water was 10 degrees colder than it is today and those fish just were not active at all. Now I caught a gorilla but I only caught one other fish and had maybe two or three other blow-ups. I'll link to that video here if you haven't seen it yet. Haven't caught anything nearly that big today, but the fish are definitely more active. 
even though this tide is not budging. Now I'm not in an area right now where I'd be able to tell if the tide was moving, but I can tell you by looking at the buoys, it ain't moving. I think this wind is letting off the gas pedal a little bit. I also think I'm an idiot for saying that. Hopefully the wind isn't listening. All right, so I've gone a little bit without a bite. I've also gone a little bit without seeing any bait. If you're not in the bait, you're probably not gonna get bit. Fishing 101. All right, last cast. Then I'm gonna go make another drift, kind of zeroing in on the hot zone. This fish are definitely not in the open water in this cove. They seem to be at the far back side, and that's it, period. And they definitely seem to be fairly close to the shorelines. Not right up on them, but maybe within the first 30 yards or so of the shorelines. All right, let's make a little run. Now the bad thing about fishing these topwater trout from a boat is that each time you make a pass through here, running your outboard, you spook the big fish. They're very, very skittish. They don't stick around at all. They just leave the area. So what I'll generally do is make three or four passes and then skedaddle and go somewhere else. The ideal thing to do would be to wade fish, and that's what they do in southwest Louisiana as well as throughout Texas, but it's just not possible here in southeast Louisiana. You get out the boat, you're going to sink up to your anus. <laughs> Our marshes are full of what's called gumbo mud. It's organic detritus. It's geologically very young. It hasn't compacted yet. It's still in a state of decay. So when you get out, it's going to be a little bit before you hit that substrate. And you won't be able to walk at all. You won't be able to take a step. It's miserable. So waiting is not an option here. You just have to do the best you can with the boat. Try and remain as quiet as you can. And definitely don't run your outboard through the area you intend to fish. All right, this wind's definitely getting more manageable. I'm a happy man. It wouldn't hurt my feelings if it fell another five miles per hour, though, I'll tell you that. There was a redfish behind me. There he is. <laughs> that was the coolest thing ever. Look at this fish going bananas. He was following the bait and just would not hit it. Kept taking little swipes. <laughs> that was awesome. He's not a keeper red, but that was fun. I kept changing the cadence, trying to get him to commit. And finally he did. All right, big boy. I'll let you go so you can grow up. Don't make this same mistake again, all right? This wasn't a real mullet. They don't act like that. Man, you, you got it good, too. You were never going to get off. Man, that's got to hurt right in the tongue. Apparently it does. You are 15 inches. See you, dude. Come on, big girl. Won't you back it up? I heard you. I heard you told my friend. I'm just not your dad. Ooh! All right, all right, all right. What are you? I think you're a red. I think you're a red. I'm seeing some copper. Are you a big trout? Nice. Nice. You are not a red. All right, hang on to it, buddy. Hang on to it. Hang on to it. Come on, dude. This way. No, 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 no. All right. There we go. Good trout. Good trout. Trout of the day by far. Woo. He threw that bait right at me. Whew. That could have been a lot worse. All right, pretty trout. Definitely the trout of the day so far. Probably 20 inches or so. They got bigger ones in here, but this is still not a bad fish. 19 inches. Wind decided to blow again. I'm not surprised. The relative calm was nice while it lasted. All right, top water fishing for speckled trout definitely requires some patience, and it's not for everybody. If you're the type of guy who knows he's not gonna be content, gone back to the dock with less than his limit, there are more efficient ways to catch speckled trout. But I can tell you there are definitely no more exciting ways than throwing top water baits. Now, if you haven't had much success with them in the past, what I would encourage you to do is to go out on a really good day for top water fishing Water temps in the 60s, that's the prime zone. Find an area with clean water, find an area with mullet. If you're in the 60s, you got clean water and you got mullet, you got a good shot. 
If you've got grass and that kind of sparse grass, a stalk here and a stalk there, that's even better. But if I had to be without one of those factors, it would be the grass. Go in there, work those flats, just make big long drifts and stick with it. If you give it 10 or 15 minutes and you don't get a bite and you switch to something different, you're gonna lose a lot of confidence in topwater baits. You're gonna have to give it a few hours. Work a cove, maybe make two drifts, you don't get anything, go find a different cove. Sooner or later, you're gonna run across some fish and it may be the biggest trout you've caught all year. And don't let that climbing sun bother you. That's kind of a summer mentality. In the summer, definitely you're gonna throw topwater baits. You're gonna do it before sunrise, that first 45 minutes or so of the day. This time of year, once the shrimp have been pushed out of this marsh, topwaters will work all day. What I'll typically do is come out, throw topwaters for two or three hours, and then switch to a cork or a tight line just to put some fish in the boat and then call it a day. Now the cove I was fishing seems to have kind of played out and unfortunately a boat ran back there with me. I found another cove on a map last night in a different lake, not too far from here. I'm gonna make a quick drift in it and if it doesn't happen, I'm gonna throw some corks. But I can tell you this, I'm already gonna go home a happy man. All right, so the wind direction is not ideal for this cove, but it should be manageable. I'm gonna have to bucket a little bit. I'm not seeing a ton of bait but that could change as I cover some water. Water looks good, so I got that working in my favor. Man, the water looks really good. All right, I'm starting to see some bait up ahead. Or up yonder, as my country friends say. Looks like there's a pond right here, which would be draining into this cove, but I don't think the tide's doing a thing. Let's see if anything's hanging out here, just in case. Waiting for the tide to move. All right, my top water bite has gone the way of the dodos. It was killed by a combination of wind and poultry tide. So I'm gonna see if I can catch a few fish under a cork to add some fillets to the box, and then I'm gonna call it a day. All right, man, I got absolutely beat to smithereens getting into this protected area. Had to cross some open water, and it is just so rough. At one point, I was going directly with the wind. My speedometer said I was going 22 miles an hour, and there was no wind so that tells you the wind is probably around 22 just not ideal fishing conditions at all i'm gonna make a quick pass in this area water still just so pretty not moving an iota can't see any tide lines anywhere anything like that so the deck is stacked against me catching some fish but i'm gonna give it a whirl but before i do that i'm gonna eat some fish that i fried last night i'm starving this is all we had left two pieces Cold, but good, really good. And I tell you, no condition, I hate wind, listen. I mean, I hate wind, but no condition makes fishing tougher in our area than lack of tide. These fish are just conditioned to feed when that water's moving. When it's not moving, they just don't feed. They know they can fill their bellies when that water is moving, so they just, they're just not motivated when it's not. All the bait scatters, it's just hard for them to, to key in on anything, just like it is for you as an angler. All right, there's a fish. All right. Boy, is that not a big one. <laughs> that is not a big one. <laughs> that's about a, uh, a nine inch speckled trout. Only one way to go from here and that's up. All right, there's another one. He's little too. Oh, I'm, no he's not. What in the world? You were just swimming at me, weren't you? You're feeling redfish like. Yep. Definitely a redfish. Definitely a red. And not a keeper red either. Man, this drag doesn't want to pull. You know, I already picked up the net. <laughs> it's never around when I need it. Man, this guy is just, I mean, this is a big red. This is a beast. This is a beast. He hit that shrimp creole and swam right at me. I set the hook, I didn't think he was big at all. But he's a giant. And he's hiding under the boat. No, 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 no. There you go. Go run a little bit. Wear yourself out. Wear yourself out. Man, this fish just will not give it up. All right, you done? Are you done? I'm gonna grab this net. This is a gorilla. 
All right, let's not break the net. Oh, there we go. There we go. Whew. That fish wore me out. Whew. All right, let's get this hook out of you and set you free. Hey, dude, save it just for a minute. Save it for a minute. All right, here we go. You ready? Big fat belly on this thing. Look, he's definitely been eating. That is a beast of a redfish. I'll let you go. I don't think you're gonna need to be resuscitated. But we'll do it just in case. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on, there you go. Good boy. All right. All right. Well, that was unexpected, but definitely a lot of fun. <laughs> Good Lord, that fish wore me out. I'm gonna tighten my drag again. So we caught a little tiny trout and then a big red. Believe me, that red was probably in here feeding on those little trout. I've had so many trips this time of year where you gotta keep the speckled trout away from the bull reds as you're reeling them in. All right, last cast on this drift. I had three good takedowns and that bull red. So I think I'm gonna do the drift again, just not the exact same one, just maybe 50 yards away. There's a fish, there's a fish. That's a speckled trout, that's a keeper too. Oh, pretty, pretty fish, that's a nice trout. All right, all right, real good trout. Hey, big boy, looks right in the top of the mouth. Look at that. He wasn't getting away. All right. Open up. Open up. I saved you from that big bull red. You should be happy. About a 17 inch fish. He will join the team. Lock these rods down. Otherwise, it will be part of the reef. All right, new drift angle. See if it pays dividends. Oh goodness, another red. Another red. <laughs> Let's loosen this drag. There he goes. I tell you, this is just world class redfish action. Not even targeting redfish, just targeting trout. This is another bruiser. I mean, I haven't seen him yet, but I can tell by how he's fighting. This is a big fish. Good thing I still have my net out. You're not even close, are you, dude? You're not even close to being done. Nope. I mean, this water's got three feet of visibility. Just so beautiful. Stay out of the motor. Let's come on around over here. There you go. Oh yeah, he's every bit as big as the last. All right, he's done. He is done. Think a two pick in him, he's done. All right. Another one hooked right in the corner of the mouth, which is good because that they've got this rough patch, rubs against your line if you hook them too deep. That's how so many of these big bull reds get away. Look at this guy, look at him. That's a big red. Not as big as the last, but still big. We're gonna revive him and set him free. He doesn't need any reviving. He's still kicking. So my cork rig for today is the same one I've been using the whole fall. Just really been paying dividends this year. And that's a Versamax bolt cork with, uh, I got about five or six feet of leader on here. But of course, I'm not fishing it that deep. I'm probably fishing about three feet. And then tied to that, I've got a 1 16th ounce death grip jig head and a shrimp creole colored matrix shad. Until this stops delivering for me, I'm not changing it. <laughs> it has been so good to me this fall. All right, there's a trout. That's a trout. That's not a red. I'm guessing 13, 14 inches. Yep, I'm gonna say 14, 15 actually bigger than I thought. So awesome. All right, well, another boat saw me catching those fish and moved in on me. <laughs> That's fine, I'm gonna give it to him. I've caught plenty enough today on a day with really adverse conditions. 
windy windy no current we're still able to put a nice box of fish together and doing it really my favorite way top water following that up with cork fishing which is a great way to put a bunch of fish in the boat quickly well if you like the video give it a thumbs up also subscribe to the marshman mass on channel on youtube and be sure to hit the notification bell so you know what we post until next time if we don't see you in the marsh we'll see you right here on marshman mass on